Hello all you dwarf loving cosmonauts, as always I am Cosmic and today we're going to be reviewing The Dwarfs, a fantasy role playing game developed by King Art Games and published by THQ Nordic. The Dwarfs places the players in the role of Tungdil who is a dwarf orphan raised by humans and how he becomes centrally involved in the events of the end times of Girdelgard against the perished lands which is a land filled with orcs and all kinds of evil beings. I've kept my eye on this game for pretty much over a year now and it's something that I've been highly looking forward to to see how it turned out. The whole concept behind the idea is it centers on the dwarfs is fun for me. It has a setting that really stands out in terms of it's a good fantasy setting. It doesn't do anything particularly innovative or different, but there are some good homages to other great fantasy literature. And I think that the overall world that they've created is something that is really, really well done. The other big thing that I first noticed when I entered the game was of course the art style. The art style is wonderful. The sound is wonderful. The character animations in the cutscenes are fantastic and all props off to the character animators for that. I think the game looks great. But let's get down to the nitty gritty. Let's get down to the mechanics. So The Dwarfs is a fantasy role playing game that features real time tactics combat with the pause option and overworld gameplay in the form of a world map. So let's start with the world map. The world map is massive, it looks great, however slightly disappointing and I'll get to that in a moment. First, you are represented by an icon and you can travel via the world map to different locations. Some of these locations will have amenities such as a tavern where you can buy provisions for your party. Now provisions are used to heal your party as you travel. You can also buy items that will have quest significance. As you travel the world map there are side quests that don't don't involve going onto a map or don't involve any combat. They are story side quests and ultimately you also have main quests that are on the world map also that is m mostly just text and voice acting and talking and then there are some choice and consequences to be had in there. The consequences aren't going to change the ending and they're not going to have massive effects but there are a couple of moments in the game that you have to make a decision that is pretty impactful and can mean the life or death of certain characters. A great example of this in the early game is when I stumbled upon a town when I was only a party of one and as a dwarf I decided to help the local villagers uh, build a better wall to defend themselves. Now shortly after that a orc horde invaded. Now if I hadn't of built better defenses for that town they would have been instantly wiped out but because I did they were able to hold off the orcs for an extended period of time. So you're talking about choice and consequences that have that kind of effect. But let's get on to the good stuff. Let's get on to the combat because combat is something that you're going to be doing a hell of a lot of in this game. The first thing I wanted to say is hats off once again to the character animators. They've created characters and enemies that move with a sense of realism and a sense of fluidity that really does make the entire combat feel very very good. The problem is is that you also have a system that while being looking very nice and looking very fluid it also feels chaotic. There's a lot of things going on there's a lack of accuracy with certain movement and that can be a little bit of a problem. The good side about the combat is the fact that it is a real time system with a pause option and you can pause the game at any time to issue commands to your party. Party members have three abilities each. They can learn more than three abilities but you can only ever equip three abilities to take into combat with you and you can use those abilities with action points and characters will gain action points over time in battle. The most fun thing about the dwarfs in the combat however is the fact that you always face overwhelming odds to the point of you sometimes have to run. The orc hordes that you face are massive, they have multiple enemies in including small orcs, big orcs, giant ogres, elves, that kind of thing. There's a multitude of enemies each with 
you know, different ways that's best to take them down. So you're always having a multitude of characters on screen. Your warriors are always surrounded, which makes the combat feel tense. It makes it feel chaotic. Things can go wrong. You can get surrounded and encircled, and then you have to use your tactics to get out of there. The characters have a wide range of abilities that are all fantastic. Like, for example, one of the characters has the ability to leap um, up ledges and leap into a massive group of enemies to spread them out you can use the environment to kill enemies so you can push orcs off a bridge and it all works very very well the problem with the combat is the movement the movement is very fluid and is very fast paced but it's also inaccurate especially when using a mouse and keyboard so characters can run and they don't stop in time or there's little problems like that but overall it's a fairly solid enjoyable combat system there are a couple of niggles and problems inherent one of the fact is that friendly fire damage is always on so when you have such a large amount of enemies and especially when you have a lot of abilities that do aoe damage it is, can be quite a pain when you miss the target and hit one of your allies and kill them instantly that is a bit of a problem also is a bit of a problem is the fact that some battles will not end if one of your party members gets knocked out, but then other times it will. You will just instantly game over if one of your party members dies, which can be a little bit frustrating, especially when you don't have a system that is able to revive fallen combat allies, which is something that I would have definitely put in, especially for the few boss battles that are in there. Despite some of its inherent problems, I really enjoyed the combat. The, the idea of mass facing mass orc hordes and pushing a group of orcs off a cliff into a giant crevasse never really got old and I really did enjoy it. One of the problems however is the fact that the missions themselves often change objectives so sometimes it's not about fighting sometimes it's about reaching the other end of the map and just surviving but the objectives that the game gives you in terms of the actual text aren't always that clear and that can be a little bit of a problem especially when you think you're supposed to be killing dwarves uh, killing orcs and you're actually supposed to be running away but overall it is a fun system that i personally really enjoyed it certainly might not be for everybody but for people like me it is fun it i like the chaotic nature and the fluidity of the combat so let's turn now to the story i really like the story in the dwarves i thought it was a well thought out story with some really great and memorable characters in there and it was something that I really, really enjoyed, you know, from start to finish. The characters that you gain in your party are interesting, and the overall world design is really nice. I really loved the world of Girl to Guard. I loved the characters, I loved the idea, I loved the lore. It was all on point in that regard. However, there is one major flaw. There is not enough of it. There is not enough of this game. I completed this game in around eight to nine hours. Now, considering the fact that there are a ton of loading screens in this game that can last up to 30 seconds sometimes, that means that I probably completed the game in eight hours flat. For me, that is far too short for an RPG. And I'll tell you why. I have no problem with an RPG that is a short experience. The problem is that this one in particular, at points, feels rushed. The ending feels very, very rushed. Some of the mid-game content feels very, very rushed. When you start the game, there's all this explanation, there's these cutscenes, there's this you know slow movement into the world. And then you're jumping from major event to major event with no real content in between at times. And that for me is a big problem, especially when you're on this epic quest with these amazing characters. There's just not enough content here and it definitely does feel rushed at some points. I had no problem with the ending in particularly, but it did feel very rushed. It was kind of, you know, up, done and dusted within 10 minutes and that was a bit of a problem because I was like, is that it? That's That doesn't seem like enough. I want to explore more of this world, you know, this world that has a great art style, that has great lore, that has great characters. 
I want to spend more time in this world. I don't want to just be cut off like that. And I actually first thought when it started to end, I thought that it was going to be one of those, I'm ending this particular story arc, but there's going to be something else coming after. And then there wasn't. And I was really disappointed with that. My other major complaint with the game has nothing to do with the story. It has to do with the technical state of the game. Now, there are a couple of bugs and glitches and odd character moments and strange movement and, you know, characters transporting randomly to the top of a cliff uh, when they get too close to the edge of the map on combat, which is all fine. That's inherent. You know, they're bugs uh, that can be easily ironed out as we go along. My major issue is the fact that the game crashes a hell of a lot. And you're talking, I had probably one crash every hour and a half, which is a big technical problem and I don't know what caused it I could never figure it out but that certainly does need looked at in regards to the technical state and overall quality experience that the player is actually going to receive so I'm going to tell you right now I'm going to tell you what my thoughts are overall I would recommend this game to any RPG lover easily flat out I think it's a great game it's a great little game it has definite inherent problems to it it has flaws but for me most of my favorite games especially RPGs, have major flaws inherent to their design. That being said, however, I have something directly to say to the developers. Don't rush your shit. They're flat out. Don't rush your games. Because this, for me, could have been easily a 30 to 60 hour epic game. There was enough story, there's enough world design, there's enough lore, and you had a fantastic cast of characters that this could have gone the length in terms of comparatively to that of other RPGs. Now I understand that is going to be an expensive you know, investment for the developers and certainly I have a feeling that budget was a big factor in the length and the rushed feeling towards the end. But for me, you have created an IP that is really good and I think will probably be well received by many, many fans of role playing games. However, you need to really invest in your IPs. I definitely think that any game that leaves you wanting more at the end is certainly a good game. However, I shouldn't be left wanting more simply due to a lack of content. I should be able to experience a ton of content, 30 hours plus, and then be left wanting more after I've had a complete experience. And not to say that The Dwarves isn't a complete experience per se, but it is certainly a very short, complete experience when it should be a hell of a lot longer. Because you have the story for a longer story arc, you have the world and characters for a longer story arc, and I almost feel like, especially with the way how the story flowed throughout the game, that you originally intended this game to be a hell of a lot longer than it actually is because you have this giant world map this giant world map with barely anything in it barely anything in it why did you create such a large world map if you weren't intending to put content into it so that is definitely a the biggest feedback i would have because i want more of the dwarfs the characters the world definitely want more of it and I was very, very disappointed that I only got eight hours worth of it. And that is something that sincerely does need addressed in future games. Now, the ending certainly maybe leaves the opening or the possibility of a sequel. Not, It's not like a cliffhanger ending or anything like that. It's just something that will probably leave it open, the door open, if they get you know, a good successful sales record and try to take a look at the IP again. But for me... I heartily recommend it. I think it's one of those games that has a lot of good points. It has a few flaws, but is a game that is very, very charming at its core. And it's certainly for any person who likes dwarfs in Lord of the Rings or anything like that, or someone who likes RPGs, you know, who with real-time combat, with the ability to pause games like, you know, Pillars of Eternity, things like that. It's very different from that, but it's certainly fun enough to keep people occupied for the eight hours that it will take you to complete it. So that is my review of The Dwarves. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed the review, please hit the like button. Make sure to subscribe and share the video on your social media. And as always, I will see you next time.